If Richard Clapton didn't want to be a pop star, then it was a pity he was such a talented songwriter. Under orders to write a hit song, he did. Girls on the avenue. Eventually, he latched onto the hard rocking lifestyle a bit too hard. Oh, I was bloody rock, yeah. But 30 years on, Richard Clapton is a great survivor. A lot of people strum an air guitar and dream of stardom. Well, Richard Clapton had the air guitar, and eventually a real one, courtesy of a friend's dad. But being a rock star wasn't such a lure. Richard Clapton, welcome to Talking Peter, Heads. Peter, it's lovely to be here. But you became a legend anyhow. Well, a leg end, after a fashion. <laughs> Would you explain the difference? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel more like Foghorn Leghorn than I do, a legend. Um, I mean, it, it's, yes, it's, it's quite, I guess it's quite odd. Um, the way other people perceives, perceive you. I mean, I can't really feel that. Well, over the years, there's, there's been 18 albums. W what are the ones that the audiences want to hear most? Quite honestly, I'd have to say that, that Goodbye Tiger really stands out. Um, like Girls in the Avenue, which, which I think the public at large uh, mainly recognise, for my hardcore audience, it was a bit of a flash in the pan and it's not taken all that seriously by my audience. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a party song at the end, of the end of the gigs. A rather nice article about you a few years ago said you've got lots of milestones, mm -hmm. but plenty of burnt out car wrecks on the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, look, I, I Sums it up, really. <laughs> it does. You wouldn't have changed a thing? I wouldn't have changed a thing. Um, I think because... Uh, ever since I was very young, you know, a young teenager, I was always kind of um, besotted with, it, with that whole bohemian kind of lifestyle. Richard, let's turn the clock back and look at your early years, which, to be honest, you wouldn't really wish on anyone. Well, I was born in Sydney during the Menzies era, and my mother was the night sister at Sydney Hospital, and my father was a doctor. My parents had separated. They were actually divorced by the time I was two, so uh, I got off to a pretty shaky start in life. The early years with my mother are a bit of a blur. Her life became a roller coaster, and I was on the ride with her. She'd sort of had periods of a fairly normal existence and not too different to everyone else's upbringing, but then she'd sort of fall down in these holes, and quite honestly, we'd end up pretty much out on the street. I mean you know, with no roof over our heads. And I, I, I do recall a couple of times, I think I was placed in orphanages. Well, my mother was sort of the antithesis of my father because she'd always aspired to probably more the bohemian artistic sort of side of life. And I mean, she never did realise that sort of dream she had until my mother died when I was 10, um, which was from suicide. Um, I, I had no knowledge of my father. I, you know, she never mentioned him. I knew nothing about him at all. So, uh, you know, a few days after she died, it was a bit of a shock, you know, when my father came to collect me and pretty much fairly promptly placed me into a boarding school where I spent all my high school years. And we just never got on. And we, it was a fiery clash from the very start. My father obviously wanted me to, you know, become a doctor or, or some similar sort of career. My best friend at school, Ross, was also from a fairly well-off family and we were completely besotted with the Rolling Stones. We were into that thing of, you know, young teenage boy thing of, you know, getting broomsticks and looking at yourself in the mirror and going, how cool am I? There was no way my father would have ever allowed me to have a musical instrument. So Ross's father actually bought me my first electric guitar. When my father realised that I'd been buying all these Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan albums and things like that, he was, um, he was quite outraged. On the day of the maths exam, my father and I had, had yet an, another falling out. I went into the city in Sydney and bought a Rolling Stones album instead of going to the maths exam. So that was the end of that. I was so determined to get out of Australia and my friends and I are looking over, especially the UK, and it was just all happening. And it was just 
In England, there was, and specifically London, there was this explosion of the whole hippie cultural revolution was happening. So I saved up the money, got myself the cheapest fare on the ship going across, and um, that was how I got to London. Richard, it wasn't until your mum died, when you were 10, that you met your dad. Um, I wasn't even aware of my true identity. So, you know, when a, when a, a doctor who was distinctly Chinese looking came to pick me up, it was, um, yeah, a bit of a bombshell. What impact did that have on you? Well, I, I really had a lot of resentment, not just for... I, I had resentment towards my father, and on the other side of things, I had resentment for my mother's family because I, I just felt they contributed to her demise um, to a, a very great extent. Um, because, I mean, you know, quite frankly, my mum became... went from being unsettled to quite unhinged, you know, towards the, the, the last couple of years of her life. Um, and so I carried this baggage for a long time and, it, and it's, it, it really did literally take decades to sort of try and reconcile it. God knows, for a ten-year-old, you went through an awful lot. Yeah, I've, I've reflected on that. Um, and, and perhaps it, it's contributed a lot um, to the nature of my songwriting, you know? Because uh, I guess no pain, no gain, you know? Bob Dylan had a pretty checkered childhood when you read about it, and so did most of my idols, really. Is that where the sunglasses came from? Uh, partly. Now, the, the sunglasses actually came from um, a condition called pterygiums, which you get on your eyes, and the eye surgeon... Uh, the eye surgeon, after he performed the operation successfully, he said to me, um, if I were you, th I, I would start wearing shades on stage. And I, you know, I said, well, yeah, and it just became an image thing, and... And now it's, you know, if I don't want to be recognised, I take them off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happened when you got to London. 